So I wanted to film because today is what? Transplant day. Transplant day. day. Zero. It's what? Day zero. Day June zero. 14th. How do you feel? I'm nervous. Well, I feel tired. Yeah. I just need a minute to go shot. Yeah. I'm nervous because of the climb out of this. You transplant, you dig a hole, give the blood. Okay, now I got to climb out of the hole. I'm uh, actually going to go down a little farther first with the transplant because of the chemo. Yeah. The chemo. Is accumulative. The, the, the chemo, chemo cumulative, and I still got like two or three more days to go down now on the chemo that I just did, which was a beast. Yeah, it was. On Easter. On Easter. He's risen. He is risen indeed. <laughs> Gave up Facebook for Lent. We did. Both of us. That was interesting. That was fun. That was lots of days of going to reach for my phone to post stuff and then going, oh, no, I'm not going to. Sometimes people give up food and that kind of stuff. do that. That would be but probably. We couldn't a, do that. I, I probably could have. That would have been better for me to give yeah. up food. Couldn't give up food. That was a long 45, 40, 47. 40. 40 days. Length is 40 days. I know that. I knew that. It felt like 45 days. We get lots of questions when we run into people at church, out and about, restaurants, and at school, different places that we go, asking us lots of questions. So we just decided we would write down the, the, the biggest number that we get and share the answers with all of you um, so that you would kind of have a, if you're interested, you would know where the bushes are at these days. And we have notes. And we have notes. We so, have notes. So that we don't take ra rabbit okay. trails. Because it is Easter. It's Easter. But I'm fine. Call the dogs, Quint. Yeah, that didn't work. That didn't work. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Okay. <laughs> Question number one. How is Anton? So, I am... Okay. Because the last post was, look, they think he might be getting pneumonia. Oh. And please pray for him because right. we're and just we can, really struggling. Right, and then we're radio silent. Yeah. The, pretty much Anton is in the position where either I'm okay or I'm dead. Okay. That's not quite true. That's not true. There's a step in between where either I'm okay or I'm in a hospital. I've had this chest thing since August and haven't been able to beat it for whatever reason. It is related to my sinuses. It is post, it is nasal drip. It is draining into my lungs and I just cannot for the life of me beat it. That is part of the weakened immune system thing that is still going on. Am I okay? Generally speaking, yes. I only missed three weeks of school back in October. I am still teaching. I have never stopped teaching. I haven't missed any school since October as far as health related issues. I'm already a walking miracle that I didn't get sick, that I didn't get the flu, that, that basically, I know that there's supposedly a second wave of flu season coming, but that I did not get the flu. What? Wait, freeze. Yeah, there's supposedly. There's a second one. Supposedly. No, no supposedly. 
supposedly. No. no. I rebuke I you. did not. <laughs> I, <laughs> no more waves of flu. Don't okay? rebuke me. I didn't do it. Not you. The flu. <coughs> oh, the flu. Okay. I've oh. been coughing since August. Yeah. That's that's legitimately true. <coughs> he wants to be in the And my doctor's aware of it. I mean, there's, and there's the nothing you can do. It's just, you've got a weakened immune system. Yeah. Talk about your medication and the side effects. So my medication, so one of the things, you, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can see it. Look at that. You see how my face is red and my hands art? That's, the, the medicine does this red face thing. The, reticent, the medicine has changed the, the my reticent. body shape. My, this, this, you know, normally when I was healthier, my arms filled these things out. You wouldn't have this. This flat that we go out here, right? And I, now my arms are super skinny. I wore shorts for the first time yesterday. That was depressing. Well, let <sighs> me just my, say, my on leg shape of, is weird. Let me just say, on behalf of women everywhere who wear shorts for the first time at the beginning of a season, it's depressing. So, baby, get on okay. board. But you know, so Am I right. Um, I think one of the things I notice about your medication is it does change your temperament a little bit. Yep. It I'm changes like, your tolerance, your patience. I'm not trying to beat I'm, a, I'm not trying to beat a She's dead horse. She's saying I'm cranky. <laughs> I'm not trying to beat She's a dead I'm cranky. horse. But I'm I've just been on saying steroids, steroids some, have a I've been on steroids since Anybody June. who's been on steroids would agree. There is such a thing as roid rage. It's a real thing. And it's a, it's a, the struggle is real. This helps temper that. I'm going to have to edit that out. It's wine. It does kind of change you. It does kind of alter you. Your stamina is still very low. And even though he does all these amazing things, you know, you're at work, you're pushing harder than most transplant post-leukemia patients would, you still have, I think that it wears you out how much your stamina is different from what it used to be. Every day, my chances go down to relapse. 14 months, you're really good. I guess two years, like official. Okay. But you know what I'm saying? Question number two. Do you still get treatment? I go to the clinic every two weeks. They test my, they take blood, and then I get the results of that, and then that's it. I still take 21 pills a day right now. I may not, no, it's not even that much. Two, five. It doesn't matter. Two, Point is. five, one, two, two, 12. Oh, I'm done 12. 12 pills a day. But in terms of like treatment. But, but I don't get a treatment because unless something goes wrong, they find something, sorry, with the blood. So I get tested every day. Our dogs are wrestling on the couch next to us. Yes. It's not distracting at all. What's next? What's next is your transplant anniversary, which yeah. is June 14th. June 14th, which we mentioned. And um, that's the first big marker that's coming up. But... As we mentioned, his doctor feels like two months beyond that. So the 14, the 14 month mark is really when he'll feel more confident saying Anton's in remission, actual remission. And although you are cancer free. I am cancer free. And you are definitely a survivor at this stage. Um, we always worry a little bit. We worry with the relapse because it was kind of really pushed on us from the very beginning that that was, we were high risk for that and that you had a higher chance of relapse, but we just, you know, we can't live every day like that. We just have to live as if, you know, we've been given this day, and so that's what we focus on. Otherwise, how do you get out of bed in the morning? It's difficult. <laughs> I know. No, I mean, I know that, but I mean, you know what I mean. You can't think about that. The, you can't think about, you can't, we can't focus on the what if, what if, what if. We have it to is just, very difficult. It is very difficult. I, I, you know, we've. You know, it just. It looms over you. You just don't. You know, we were thinking of maybe doing a trip for spring break and we just kind of realized that I can't travel farther than three hours from Dallas. Yeah. We just, we know that that's because if something were to happen, I've got to be able to get back to my doctor in yeah. my hospital. And so you always feel like a rubber band. You can only go so far. You got yeah, got to bounce. We didn't end up going to anything anyway, so which is fine. But post cancer life is really hard, and I really feel because it kind of opens your eyes to all the people who have cancer or really tough diseases or illnesses of how much you become homebound and how dependent you are on your medical care, your your medication. Like we panic if we you know you forget a dose. 
not just the relapse living in the back of your brain at times, but just the fact that you're, you are tied so close to home. You can't make plans. It's hard to make plans. It's hard to say, you know, well, we're going to go, you know, oh, well, you know, this fall we should go skiing or, oh, you know, this whatever, you know, when it's winter time. It, we just can't, we just can't do it. We just have to keep on trying to stay really close to home. <coughs> That cough makes me sad. Yeah. I have a colleague of mine who is 50, 55 years old, and he's retiring. Teacher retirement system and everything else. And I kind of have to work until I'm 64, 65 years old, which is fine, normal, great, and everything else like that. I'm 46. And I've had cancer. And I've had leukemia. I don't even, there's a part of me that, that's just, I'm not going to be alive that long. You know, we talk about living day to day, which is true. You have to be thankful you're alive, which is true. And I am, but you know, I've had to, John and I, John Sharon, my coworker that I work with at Losar, we've, we've mapped out the year for next year. And part of me just looks at it and goes, There's, there it is on paper. Am I going to get there? Is something going to happen between now and then? I mean. Yes, you are going to get there. There's a constant tension between planning it out and not knowing if you're going to get there. This is like the internal dialogue of the cancer survivor? Of this one. How do you... Yeah. To retrain your mind to think like that because it's really hard to. Everything becomes so fragile. Yep. That you just keep wondering, will I get to do that? Will I get to be here for that? Will I see that? Right. That is the hard part about cancer. Yep. How are the kids? How is your wife? How is life? We won't take 75 hours to explain all of that because, you know, some of it's self-explanatory. Here we are. We're talking. You, obviously, you can tell we're doing, you know, okay, and we're hanging in there. Right. Like people say, hey, how are you? And I, I want to just be like, great. But, I mean, honestly, I just have a hard time putting that face on. Well, and that's the same thing. It's even, how are you doing? I'm well. I, how do you explain? I mean, it's hard. And yet, I, st I appreciate the question. Right. I appreciate the interest and I appreciate the love from where it comes from. Or do I just say, oh, you know, same old, same old. Plugging along. We are the little engine that could dish. The kids are resilient. The kids are working hard to work through some of their stuff and they have help for that. So that's great. Uh, it takes a long time to get back and to get your bearings again and to get your, your feet back underneath you. And I do think like, as we already said, you know, when you go through a trauma like this and you are traumatized by it, which we all, we all have been, the kids have, I have, Anton has obviously. When that happens, you spend so much time after the trauma trying to get your life back to where it was. And that's the problem is you can't. There that's isn't. not an option. You don't get that life back. That life, in a way, we have had to grieve and just make peace with and say goodbye to. I mean, It's like a death, in a way. You have to say the Anton that you were before you had before you got cancer, is not the Anton you are today or will be tomorrow. Right. In the same way, um, the same is true for our family as a unit, I think, and for our kids and for me. It's just not the same. And so you're constantly striving to get back to that place because you're just desperate for that normalcy that you, that you had. And it's just not really an option. We have to find the new normal. And I think we work really hard at that. Yep. Trying to find the new normal and to be okay with the setbacks and to be okay with our own weakness um, and our own sadness. Being, ab being able to still cry and say, this isn't how we saw this going. 
Um, and we've had some really rough stuff in the midst of Anton's cancer. Of course, you guys know already, I lost my father and my grandfather within a few days of each other uh, last October. That was a huge blow, a huge setback, very traumatizing, like adding trauma to trauma. So yeah, we, we have had a really rough year and I think anybody who follows our life or this care page already knows that and when you guys see us, you're always gracious and you're kind and you're loving. And that has been huge for us. As Christy has often mentioned when she posts on the care page, it's but God that we're here. It's but for God. All of it. All of it. And so. It really has been miraculous to say the least. It's been incredible. So many blessings have come out of this, regardless of I would never want anybody to go through this. Yeah. It's horrible. It's horrible. I think there is a lack of sharing. Right. There's a lot of people who go through this every single day, not just leukemia, all kinds of cancers, all kinds of illnesses. And it doesn't really get talked about. It's just not, it's kind of frowned on to talk about our pain or our, our, our suffering or our trials and how that real time affects families and children and wives. And it affects you. It affects your finances. It affects everything. Oh. And I think it's okay to say, hey, you know, white hanky, like, oh my gosh, this is impossible. It feels so hard. The only reason that I feel Anton and, and myself, our family, have been able to climb the mountain, scale the top, is because, A, we have our faith that God... I mean, we haven't scaled to the top. Oh my God, we're so far away. Sorry, but we're climbing the mountain. You need to catch up. Sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm nearing the top or else <laughs> I think my point is that the reason that we've been able to do that I feel very strongly is because our faith that God has a purpose and a plan he does not waste our suffering he does not waste our pain it, because we have shared because we have been honest about the journey and it's been oftentimes very ugly but for whatever reason that's what reaches people because pain is something that's universal and everybody relates to trial, suffering, and pain. Because let's face it, for the most part, life is very difficult. And we live for the joy and the, and, the, and, the, and the fun and the happiness. Those come, but that's not everyday life for most of us. Most of us do strive towards those things and we find them in the midst. Having this amazing community that has rallied around us like unbelievably for the past year plus you're still following you're still taking care of us we're still receiving sweet notes gift cards it's so amazing and kind and it's just wonderful to know that people care that people think about our humbling. little our little family yeah like that we're still on your radar is very humbling and last just that we have each other because it is so difficult to navigate and you just don't realize how difficult until you, you think to yourself, well, forever in a crisis, you know, you band together, which is ideal, which is what we did. But I know that there are families who do sort of come apart at the seams under this kind of struggle. And I'm so glad that because of the first two, that hasn't happened to yeah. us. Oh. I got winded taking apart the basketball hoop that was in our driveway. Listen, I got winded sweeping the garage. <laughs> Let's be real honest. I got winded walking across the house. <laughs> Is that so wrong? I don't know. Probably. Okay. Well, we love you guys. As always, your support has meant the world to us and continues to mean the world to us. We'll continue to update the care page. Yep. And we'll continue to keep you guys updated on whatever's going on. When June 14th Anton. comes around, you'll start getting... Party! Yeah. Bye, everybody. We love you guys. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm humbled. Love y'all. My hand goes easier in front of your face. Because <laughs> you're taller. Is that how it works? I don't know. <laughs> this bed of nails, which way should I raise my head? I say a prayer. Hoping someone hears.
There's a hydroplane waiting behind these eyes. I could find a way to hold 